I typically treat patients with HER2 positive breast cancers in the neoadjuvant setting because I get that additional benefit of knowing whether the patient has had a pathologic response or not, which could influence therapy. Uh, we're not quite at the point where we would routinely use it, but it does give us more information. Now, there is an important exception to that. Patients who have low stage disease like stage one, we feel have an excellent outcome from a less intense uh, ther uh, therapy, which is weekly paclitaxel plus trastuzumab given with the paclitaxel and then completed for a full year of adjuvant therapy. Uh, we have data from an uncontrolled study that uh, the recurrence rate is, uh, is very low. It's in the 1 to 2 percent range or even lower for, for uh, lower stage disease for stage 1, even up to 3 centimeters with negative nodes. So if you have someone who clinically is stage 1, it's probably better to proceed with surgery first because if they end up being stage 1 at the time of surgery, because remember, some patients may get upstage, they may have positive nodes that weren't expected. But if they end up still being stage one, then they may be a candidate for less intensive therapy. And this gets to your second question, what are the additional toxicities of, of more intensive therapy? Well, if you just get weekly paclitaxel and trastuzumab, you avoid some of the toxicities associated with docetaxel and also with platinum agents, uh, such as the docetaxel carboplatin regimen. Or if you use an anthracycline, of course, you avoid the toxicities of an anthracycline, the, the additional risk of cardiotoxicity and even a small risk of leukemia. So I am typically using non-anthracycline therapy for my patients. I, I use, um, if they're going to get pertuzumab, and, and the factors I use there in terms of the toxicities that you had asked about would include uh, things like diarrhea. I think that's the most important uh, toxicity that people get. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, maybe a slightly higher risk of infection and fatigue. So I balance that uh, against the, the, the benefits that uh, patients uh, might, uh, might see. So the, how long you use pertuzumab is a very interesting question because when pertuzumab received conditional approval on the basis of neoadjuvant uh, data that it improved the complete pathologic response rate, it was approved only in combination with chemotherapy. And, that's how we mostly use that drug, based on the FDA approval. When it recently received the full maintenance therapy, then we've switched to that, since that is now the FDA approved. Now, we don't have a formal comparison about using pertuzumab only with the chemotherapy versus for the full maintenance. Uh, the study, the affinity study was all or nothing. You either got trastuzumab only during both the chemo and maintenance, or you got pertuzumab for both. So we don't really have a way to answer that question. I feel that if you're using pertuzumab, that y y y you probably should just use it th the whole way unless you're having uh, extraordinary toxicities or notable toxicities. Some people, most of the diarrhea that you get with the, the regimen is during the time of chemotherapy, but there are some patients, maybe 5 to 10 percent of patients, that will have significant diarrhea just with the antibody alone, and at that point you could uh, decide to stop early. Uh, but the, um, the cost issues are something important too. And it's hard for us as physicians to factor cost in because um, many of our patients have coverage, they have variable degrees of coverage. Sometimes it's very hard for us to know how we're impacting the patient. And the patient naturally wants to uh, get the best therapy there is. So even though I think we all have to be conscious of the cost issue, um, it's difficult to apply in individual patient care. But I think this is more of a societal question that we all have to ask when we're looking at benefits traded against costs. And this comes into play with any of our biological therapies, including pertuzumab and norantinib. There's two very well-established chemotherapy regimens used in the HER2-positive setting. The first is adriamycin and cytoxin followed by a taxane with trastuzumab and pertuzumab given during the taxane portion of that regimen. And the second is a non-anthracycline-based regimen with taxotere, carboplatin, and trastuzumab, to which pertuzumab could also be added. My preference between the chemotherapy regimens is to use the non-anthracycline-based TCHP regimen. And this is based on the 10-year follow-up of the BCIRG006 trial, which Dr. Slayman presented. There were no statistically significant differences in this trial between the anthracycline trastuzumab arm and the non-anthracycline trastuzumab arm. When the number of events were analyzed, there were only 10 disease-free survival events that were greater in the non-anthracycline arm, but again, this was not statistically significant. 
my choice for the non-anthracycline containing regimen is actually more based on the toxicity because when you look at the toxicities in that trial, there were more cardiac events and more treatment-related leukemias in the patients who received anthracycline. So I believe that, that if we can provide the similar efficacy between the two arms and avoid some of the long-term toxicity, that that's the regimen that's the best for the patient. So either one of these regimens, the AC followed by taxane with trastuzumab or the TCH regimen can be used in the neoadjuvant setting with pertuzumab. One of the main toxicities seen from the addition of pertuzumab to the chemotherapy trastuzumab regimen was diarrhea. There was an increased rate of diarrhea about close to 10%. Um, this was during the time that the patients received chemotherapy along with the trastuzumab and pertuzumab. When the chemotherapy was completed and they were on the dual antibody therapy, the rate of diarrhea was less than 1%. The affinity trial, which is the first one to look at the addition of adjuvant pertuzumab to our current backbone of chemotherapy and trastuzumab looked at one year. So at this point, I don't see um, any data telling us that using less than a year of pertuzumab would give us a similar benefit.